Oh yeah, ladies and gentlemen, we are back. It is Thursday, August 25th, 2022, years after the death of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Gridiron Junkies. I am your host, George Carmona. If you guys uh, haven't followed me on all my socials, it's Mr. George Carmona, just about everywhere you look. And if you love the show and you really want to keep up to date on the things that are going on in studio, what I got going on personally, we got a lot of traveling coming up. You can follow at Gridiron Junkies. I got Amber behind the decks today. Amber, can I get a woot woot? Woot woot. I fucking love it. All right. We have to give the rookies a chance to, uh, you know, fuck up on shows like this. So I'm going to ask now, Amber, that you switch to my close up because it's time to get real serious about this show right now. Real serious. Real serious. All right. Now that we're in my close up, let's start off with the Manti Teo documentary that came out on Netflix. Um, I don't remember if like what the title of that documentary was, but if you just search Manti Teo documentary, it's probably in your uh, recommended already because that's what Netflix does. It's all their own original content. They boost that shit to the top so that way we can check it out. I checked it out this weekend because when I was growing up, I want everyone to know how big of a Notre Dame fan I was. My entire room is painted Notre Dame colors. I have a blue and gold checkered wall. I had stripes going across the other side in blue and gold. Um, I, my entire childhood thought that, yeah, no, like I'm going to end up playing college football at Notre Dame. Then reality sets in, right? You know, you realize you're either not that good and Notre Dame is kind of far as fuck away. And people like from the East Coast, they don't really recruit the West Coast. And you figure that out as you're going through the process. Um, But I was a huge Notre Dame fan. And I remember just being the happiest I've ever been as a Notre Dame fan when we had Manitao almost win the Heisman. Then after almost winning the Heisman and he, he talks about his, his girlfriend dying, then it all starts to unfold. Right? So for all of those of you who don't know what happened with Manitao, he got catfished just about as hard as anybody's ever been catfished before in their life. I mean, this dude is an all class, all world talent. Uh, you know, sadly he didn't pan out in the NFL, but regardless of that, just really stand up human being. And you see that throughout the documentary that he's a man of faith. He's a man of family and football was just tossed in there as the last F word. Um, for me, I replace football with fashion. That's why I'm always swagged out. But anyways, Football's getting added back into mine after watching this documentary because you really get to see Matt Iteo just open up uh, in a way that, you know, me as a 13-year-old kid watching that didn't really understand or comprehend. I always felt like it was like, damn, bro, like how did you get catfished like that? But what you realize about people that get catfished is they are really just insanely wholesome people and there's two people there's there's a person that's like blind to the world because they're blind to the world in every which sense of the form and that's how some people get catfished but i put man i tell in a in a special bracket of people that get catfished because he's so far invested in himself it just so happened that that girl right or it wasn't a girl it was a guy uh got to go along on the ride with him because he didn't need any extra support. Obviously he wasn't getting fucked by this person. He never fucking met her or him. All right. Like it never happened. So he was so far invested in himself that of course he feels some sort of emotional connection. But at the end of the day, I mean, we can't blame man. I tell for, for what he did. I mean, saying it out loud publicly and having, your girlfriend, this this chick, Amber, I want you to know, uh, the person he was talking to said that she had died the same day that his grandma had died. And then, like two weeks later, tells him, ah, yeah, you know, I actually didn't die, I'm alive. And then that's how this whole big catfish thing kind of like got all figured out. I fell asleep after that. I didn't watch part two. But anyways, it, it's still just super interesting to me that the best Notre Dame team that I've seen my entire lifetime was fueled by a guy that, you know, got so much ridicule and hate for just investing in himself. And I think 
everybody should take that from this documentary. And if you don't, I think you need to rewatch it and then reassess yourself because that just happens, all right? When you're so invested in yourself and you're bought into your work and your craft, the outside world just kind of exists around you. And if you've never experienced that in your life, I highly recommend it. Um, but a lot of you motherfuckers are afraid to invest in yourself. Facts. People who aren't afraid to invest right now, I'm going to segue into the college football landscape and NIL deals. I mean, I've told you guys that these Wednesday shows are going to be hitting college football and we're going to be hitting high school football. I'm doing high school football in the second half of this podcast. I got Willie White of the Be Great uh, 7 on 7 team out here. He's also a trainer for a lot of kids out here uh, locally in Las Vegas. He's going to be coming in the studio. But before we cover high school, we got to cover what's going on in college. People are investing insane amounts of money into these college football players, college athletes all across, really, in NIL deals. And if you don't know what NIL means, that means people in college now can now make money off their name, image, and likeness, which for the last you know millennia has not existed. These kids have been getting screwed out of having their jerseys sold over and over and over again and not seeing any profit. Well, that's going away now. That's going away and you're starting to see a lot of these big time colleges, the ones that have insane donors, you are starting to see them really flex their wallets right now. But what does this do for the smaller schools? And I think Deion Sanders out of Jackson State University, he brought up a very good point uh, on a segment with ESPN yesterday. When you talk about name, image, and likeness, I haven't seen anybody on anything. We keep talking about these kids are making millions of dollars. What are they on? Where is the name, the image, and the likeness? Or is it just collectives just paying these kids to participate in this or that college? We don't have that. Again, we, we don't have those resources. Uh, we can't compete with that. So the little guy is pushed aside because now when it comes down to is this guy going to choose this college or that college, we can't compete with Anning up to make sure that kid is compensated like he wants to be compensated. And I want these kids to start by focusing on the NFL and not the NIL. Mm -hmm. Now you have kids not even thinking about um, the wonderful job that Coach Saban has done and the track record that he's accumulated, but you're in or the position coach or does this scheme fit him? They're thinking about NIL. So if the money fits, uh, I go there. And that's not the way to attack this thing because the NFL is what's going to sustain you and maintain you, not the NIL. He hits all the right notes here. I found it a little hilarious that he was wearing more gold chains than I am right now. And he's talking about, you know, how he can't flex that extra little little bit of wallet that he has at Jackson State because Jackson State out of all those HBCUs down there is doing perfect. OK, they're doing way better. And they've actually provided more value to all those HBCUs, thanks to Deion Sanders, because he understands that uh, the first step is, is highlighting all the negative sides to what uh, the NIL is happening on, on his end, right? So what's, what's happening on Deion Sanders' side is it's so much harder to get these kids to buy into going to a Jackson State as opposed to an Alabama just simply for a dollar sign because now they're, these kids are, um, how could you not feel entitled if you're getting offered to pay, uh, you're, you're, you're getting offered $5 million to play football you know, from a college? How can you not feel some sort of entitlement? And how could you not want that, not only for yourself, but for your family? That's, that's huge, that's life-changing money here. The play behind saying it's it's about preparing the kids for the NFL, I do think that this is a revolutionary type of way to phrase it, saying how the NFL will sustain you and maintain you and the NIL won't. Because at the end of the day, it's all contract-based. These kids that are getting into a lot of these NIL deals, and shout out to one NIL their website and their Instagram page keeps me up to date all the time on what's going on with NIL. And I will tell you, a majority of the time of the things that I'm seeing, you you will see significant paydays occasionally for, for certain kids. But you see a lot of trade deals. 
in working uh, in a podcast studio in which you get to see the way that sponsorship type deals work, trade is one facet that it's appealing, but is it the dollar bills, right? Every time that you are asked uh, by your girlfriend's parents what you want for Christmas, you hate saying the things that you actually want. You rather just get money, right? So these kids that are putting themselves in trade deals, sure, they may like the product, but at the end of the day, they're not able to do with that product what they want to do, which is build financial stability. And NIL is providing that. And since it's such a wild, wild west right now, uh, a lot of these kids don't have managers and everything, and they're getting lost in the sauce, not only with their academics and football, but how to like market yourself. And trade deals is one way to go, but what Amazon just did and what Amazon is going to do this year, other than starting to stream the Big Ten Football Network, they are going to start partner a partnership program with USC in which student athletes are going to be able to make their own merch and sell their merch on uh, the Amazon web store. Now, I've seen a lot of uh, really successful Amazon marketplace people come through Sticky Paw Studios here in the last year, and it is one of the most lucrative businesses out in the world right now. I mean, we all use Amazon. Amazon is like investing in themselves tenfold now that they're delivering shit between 4 a.m. and 8 a.m., kind of crazy. That overnight turnaround shit blows my mind. They understand though, that these kids don't have the time in the day and the resources to go and find and make these deals themselves. So what Amazon did is they launched a program that's going to be starting this uh, upcoming August with USC. They're taking a track athlete and they're taking a defensive back from USC and they're allowing them to make their own merch and not only make their own merch, but they are going to place it on the Amazon web store so that that way people can buy it and they can make the royalties off of it. Obviously this exists for everyone right now. I mean, you don't have to be an athlete to do this, but it's like riding the wave of the fad, right? Every single kid is going to see Amazon opening up this little affiliate program to start their own merch. They're going to hop on it. And now, you know, it'll be, it, it, it'll be a cool experience for a lot of the lower level kids that, you know, can put their name on the back of a shirt and make some money from Amazon, but it's going to get oversaturated fast. So if you know any college athletes and you want them to really knock it out of the park here early, Maybe not even making merch with their name on it. Maybe making just cool merch lines in general. Amazon is going to help those student athletes out with that. And I found that on onenil.com. If you want to give that a, a just pop on the screen, Amber, and we can just scroll through it here. Onenil.com launches NIL program with Amazon. So they're going to be rolling this out. Like I said, Amazon is doing a lot of things with college football. They're going to be streaming the Big Ten Network. And uh, they're also going to be promoting these kids' merch. So if you are a college athlete and you are looking to make a quick buck, you definitely need to look into this Amazon affiliate program. Now, with that being said, that was a great first half, everybody. And that was a great first half, great first half, great first half, great first half. I think what would make this game all the better is if we took it into halftime right now. Amber, take us into halftime. Let's get the fuck out of here. Let's go. Halftime, Amber. Halftime. Let's go. Oh, it's it's a new outfit. It's a new outfit for the second half. The team uniform got a little dirty. You know, I had one of my players throw up. He couldn't show up for the second half yesterday. So I said, fuck it. I can't go and not still release this episode today. I know it's coming out kind of late, people, but I'm a three episode a week kind of motherfucker. So it's going to happen. All right. Welcome back to the second half. No Willie White today. We've locked him in for next Wednesday. We also have Big Body Cisco locked in for Monday to cover the modern day Bishop Gorman game. Possibly going to have his nephew who plays for Bishop Gorman on the podcast. We could talk about the game. 
lots of big things come in the, in the world of high school football. But just remember, the football landscape is just heating up, people. And the reason why you know it's just heating up is because we just had a Hard Knocks episode three. All right. So now we're starting to see not only players are getting cut, but they're starting to do the joint practices, which always looks good on Hard Knocks. If you haven't watched Hard Knocks, it's on HBO Max. It's a show that goes into the world of what a football team is like in the weeks leading up to a season. It's really intense. You get to see a lot of heartfelt moments, a lot of true emotion coming out from coaches. And uh, that's what I wanted to hit on most. Some of these coaches. All right. It's like, buddy, you know, you're not wearing the helmet and shoulder pads anymore. You, you should not be losing your voice. You know what I mean? I, I was a crazy coach in my early years of coaching. One of those people that would lose his voice. And I'm not saying that it doesn't happen occasionally, but if you're losing your voice and there's still an entire half of practice left, you're like coming at it a little too intense. And I think you see that from the, the Lions linebackers coach. He loses his voice early. The Lions running back coach. Oh, my God. He fucking lost his voice even before the linebackers coach. There's a level of intensity that like maybe I'm just missing. Maybe this is exactly what you need in the NFL. Maybe I'm just soft as fuck. But I think there's a there's a calm way to approach it. Um, and one of the calmest ways that I saw ever uh you know a coach ever approaching a game is Sean McVay this last year at the Super Bowl if you go back and you listen to any of those mic'd ups he's so calm and composed and it's the fourth quarter you know he's a coach that understands if you blow your load too early you can lose those big time games they didn't lose they won the Super Bowl back to hard knocks Jamal Adams is a whole lot of bark that dude every fucking rep was just in that other dude, uh, in that Colts linebacker's mouth. Me personally, like there's there's like healthy shit talking. And then there's like going over the line, which is like every single rep, you do not need to be in somebody's face. All right. They understand from your play. Also, like the sh like you're taking away from, you know, I was talking to Travis about this and like how tough it is to structure a practice, right? Because these guys have like restrictions on how much, how long they could be on the field now with how soft the NFL's gotten. With these restrictions, all those little micro 30, 45 second, oh, look at me, I'm fucking bigger than you kind of fucking blow ups, they ruin the flow of what coaches have going on. Oftentimes, it doesn't really matter. All right. It doesn't take up too much time. But after watching that hard knocks last night, I was like, damn. That's a solid two minutes of practice that can kind of be lost all because you want to shit talk somebody. Why don't you shut the fuck up? You get back in line and we run it back again and we get better and better and better. And then we could shit talk at the very end of it after we have like a, a bigger pile of, you know, examples as to see who the real winner is off of hard knocks. It's getting good. The the big cut week is coming this upcoming week. So episode four is going to be very popping. But after I watched that episode of Hard Knocks last night, while I was walking my dog, uh, we, were, we are able to, uh, there's this street that is attached to a golf course, and the, the fencing to the golf course, there's one that's like somewhat pried open. So what you're able to do is you're able to just walk through, and then you can like walk on the golf course late at night. So like, I like to do that. I went and did that as I was watching Hard Knocks. After doing all that, coming back from my walk, I say, fuck it. I'm tired of playing Rocket League. I downloaded Madden. I bought it. I got to give it a shot. And I did for a half of online head-to-head. -head. Was my Wi-Fi shitty? Yes, it was. Okay. Did the game cut out after I tried to wire my Xbox? Yes, it did. Okay. And it wasn't because I was losing. Yeah, it was. It was not. I was losing by seven. And I say, I said, this, this lag is killing me. And I wired my Xbox and then it just like shut off. It, Classic like, sent, excuse, bro. You just, it, you're just bad at it. It's cool. It's okay to be bad at a video game. George. Uh, so <laughs> it's the same fucking game. J nothing is fucking changed. Same game. Uh, the only thing that I feel is ever really different about these Maddens is like, they're changing the speed. 
or maybe I just haven't played Madden in a while. And because there's like an adjusting to how fast players move, like in old Maddens, like Madden 08 and everything, I felt like everybody was moving at supersonic speed. And I know you can adjust the sliders, but I'm talking about what they give you base level. The, the, oh my God. There's something next door falling around. We're yeah. good. We're good. Keep it going, wow. George. Keep okay. it going. So, <laughs> <laughs> that was terrifying. <laughs> I work here at the studio all day, people, and I know when like funky noises are happening. And that was a funky noise. That was a funky noise. Um, We're gonna die. It's cool. New game, same same old shit. Uh, I'm looking forward to playing Michael Sartain. Michael Sartain, this is a message for you. I want to play you and Madden on a podcast, and I want to live stream that shit. I don't care if we do ultimate team or just pick any regular teams. I'll build an ultimate team if that's the way that you roll. But we're going to make this happen, Michael. This is my call out to you. Back to me. I'm going to be calling my first ever uh, live stream of a football game tomorrow night, which is oh, really? pretty dope. Like nonstop talking the whole time? Yeah, so I, have to, I get to pull double duty. I'm thinking about having my dad kind of help me uh, do like some of the in stadium stuff because I'm going to be, yeah, like I'm proud of you. Full on color commentary of a football game. I am so, so unprepared. <laughs> like I have not looked at a I roster. My proudness. <laughs> I, uh, you know, I be proud that I got the position, you know, don't be proud that I haven't, you know, capitalized on my moment here but anyways i'm going to be calling the pine creek versus las vegas high school game pine creek is from utah they want to broadcast the game back to their people um there was like this company i want to make everyone aware of this there was this company that when covid happened they said we are going to install like these beautiful cameras i think they're ptz cameras yep. that track the ball wow. uh they they or they track the movement on the field um, so nobody needs to man the camera. You, uh, they installed all these for free at all high schools here in Vegas, in the gym and at the football field. Wow. For people to then have to subscribe to their platform. <laughs> That's how they fucking got people. And I bet they've made out though, because imagine order, like you can get a pretty good deal on a bulk order of those cameras. And then if you get, you know, 300 parents of school to, watch their kids play every single week that's i think it's worth it that's pretty cool they capitalize like a motherfucker but anyways i'm calling the game on uh nfhs their website uh it has actually like they they were pretty much going all across the country with their free installs i'm pretty sure because every single county has it in uh you know in the United States for the most part. So it's going to be pretty cool. First time I ever get to do that. But that means that I get to miss that fucking game I was talking about earlier between Bishop Gorman and Modern Day. It is going to be the biggest high school football game of the season to this point, at least on the West Coast. You're not going to get any uh, bigger of a matchup than Modern Day, who came in ranked preseason number two in the country and you have Gorman ranked six overall in the country Gorman's got a lot of speed and talent at the wide receiver position I think they are going to take care of business um but then again I absolutely know nothing about either one of these fucking teams so we have to see a couple of weeks into the season to get me some in detail stats I could watch some highlights and then I'll get a full understanding of how good Bishop Gorman is but if they come in ranked preseason number six I can't help but to think uh, they can climb up to that number two spot if they beat Modern Day this weekend. Now, very last thing that we are going to hit on today's show is one of the most creative fundraising ideas that I've ever seen in my entire life. What this school did is they took the moms uh, of the players at the school and they said, hey, uh, for X amount of dollars, we're going to pad you, you ladies up and we're going to let you fucking lay out your kids uh, so Travis, let's run that clip. Gladly. <laughs> What's comical is that like this next mom is really terrifying. Like, oh my God, dude. Travis, if we could do a rewind. I just, because I think this will be the funny, the oh funny God. in it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Go back one more time. 
That is just so comical. Just look out. She just, has so much weight against it. Oh. Boom. So what I was wow. going to say is, like, this is how it went down, like, right before that mom, uh, like, went. It was like, damn, dude, Tommy's mom's about to go up there. She's like, Tommy's mom's pushing, like, 230. <laughs> Tommy's mom's weight. pushing 230. Full head of steam here. This was, like, a nice mom, you know? Good form tackle from 62. Following through, mm -hmm. you know, what I'm noticing about this team is that they're probably going to lose a lot of games. All of their moms <laughs> are bigger than them. That mom. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh there we go. Thank of God. Course. Of course. That was a good one. I see. I didn't even play the video all the way that, wow. that far through. That's so funny. It's kind of scary for one of those kids that, you know, that, that one mom, that 87, before she was going. The boys were probably like, damn, bro, she's about to plow through this motherfucker. Do you think, do you think they had like a weight limit, like a ratio limit where you couldn't have like a scrawny kicker? You know? Oh, no. It had no, to be linemen it was, only. It was their, it was their own kid. <laughs> they got to hit their own kid. Oh, boy. So like, imagine if you didn't do your dishes the night before and mom's just got a little bit of extra pent up anger. You know, you keep asking your mom to fucking go out on the weekends and then before you know it. She gets the opportunity to just to fucking deplete you. Look at 87. Oh my God, that's an excellent form tackle. Come here, S sign that girl. Sign that girl. We need a contract for her. Travis, you're gonna play the intro music to end this shit because we're fucking out of here. I'm gonna be back with picks and predictions on Saturday. Uh, and, 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 and have a good one. Follow Gridiron Junkies everywhere. Follow it everywhere. You guys gotta do that or else I'm gonna tackle you like that mom.